Welcome to Ordinary Things, where ordinary things are explained. Today's ordinary thing, onions, also known as nature's funion. But what are onions? Onions are a bulb-shaped, concentrically layered vegetable present in nearly all human culinary cultures. They are known for their strong flavour, versatility and ease of storage. Onions are also known for making people cry, but only in the process of chopping or when hurled hard enough. When chopped, onions release a sulfuric gas that can irritate the eyes of some and causes uncontrollable tears in the eyes of others, much like the 2018 film Mamma Mia 2, Here We Go Again. But onions can also make us smile, like when they're the basis of a great dish, or when you freeze them overnight and hock them at your ex-wife's car. State troopers say someone in a moving car threw an object at their windshield. But get this, the object was a frozen onion. Onions can be chopped, ringed, powdered, juiced, or even eaten whole. Like Russian dolls, the planet Earth, and animated ogres, onions are made from a series of layers. Layers! Onions have layers! In ancient Egypt, the onion was considered an object of worship, and Egyptian royalty were customarily buried with onions and art that depicted them. King Ramses IV was actually buried with onions lodged in his eye sockets. It's believed that the ancient Egyptians saw the onion's layers as a symbol of eternity and spiritual endurance, and that they would be a comfort to the dead on their journey to the afterlife. For the same reason, I have stipulated in my will to be buried with as many copies of Shrek 2 as possible. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. But where did the first onion come from? We do not know where the first onion came from, because humans have been eating them for much longer than they've been writing about them. However, all modern day onions come from the ground, so it's safe to assume that's where the first one came from as well. The wild onion is now extinct. It only exists in cultivation, so it's likely that we'll never know where the distinctive bulb first sprouted. The earliest onion enthusiasts on record were the ancient Mesopotamians who featured onions in this groundbreaking and toe-crushing cookbook. Some people don't bother to cook onions at all, choosing to eat them raw. Some do it for the purported health benefits, others for the distinctive taste, but mostly people do it for the attention. While Libya is the number one consumer of onions, India and China are the most prolific producers of the humble stink bulb. In 1998, the governing BJP party lost re-election in a Delhi state. You may ask what that has to do with the price of onions, but the answer is everything. Onions are an integral part of the average Indian family's diet. So much so that serious fluctuations in the price of onions can have a serious effect on household budgets. So in 1998, when the price of onions soared by 700% in just 12 months, it led to angry protests across the state, forcing the government to subsidize the onion and eventually distribute them from the back of flatbed trucks. There are many different kinds of onion. The red kind, the long kind, the bargy kind, the satirical news kind, and of course, the fun kind. In football, the back of the net is sometimes referred to as the onion bag due to its resemblance to the mesh containers that onions are sometimes sold in. Day old days! Some people wash their hair with onion juice, as the nutrients in the vegetable can lead to stronger, longer, smellier hair. The humble stink sphere has been proven to reduce cholesterol, lower blood pressure, and even reduce the risk of cancer. They are good for your bones, your heart, your pancreas, pretty much everything other than your breath. The versatility of the onion is best encapsulated in the fact that they have played a part in the human's three favourite activities. Those being sex, buying things, and killing each other. Many cultures across time have revered the onion as an aphrodisiac. Egyptian priests were actually banned from consuming the onion due to the apparent accelerating effect on their libido. And in the Middle Ages, onions were given to newlywed couples in order to encourage consummation of the marriage. In the same time period, onions could actually be used as currency. Records survive from the era showing that they were used to pay rent and buy goods and services. The one thing they couldn't be exchanged for was more onions, unless you were really good at bartering. Napoleon said that an army marches on its stomach, and this is something that American Civil War general, eventual president, and accomplished beer donor Ulysses S. Grant was keenly aware of. In 1864, Grant sent a telegram to the War Department that read, I will not move my army without onions. 
The result was that three train cars of onions were immediately shipped to his location, allowing him and his army to go on to onion-energized victory. One year later, Grant would negotiate the surrender of the opposing Confederate army, bringing an end to the American Civil War. So did onions play an integral part in the end of the American Civil War? The answer is an unequivocal maybe. This has been Ordinary Things. If you want to know more about Ordinary Things, please subscribe to the Ordinary Things YouTube channel, which can be found here, in front of your face. Next time on Ordinary Things, pillows, also known as face seats. In the back streets, you'll never know if you don't go.